Liberty family of products, including Palm and AT&T Wireless. Now let's look at the starting lineup presented by NordicTrack.com. Life's an adventure. Get ready for it online. For St. Mary's, they come in 8-5. and five. Tall backcourt, Roland and her. Jonathan Sanders, a transfer from CSU. Frederick Ajuano, the forward. We talked about Daniel Kicker and the head coach, Randy Bennett, doing a good job. We'll talk about him in a minute. The Cougars, 101st start for Mark Bigelow. Jared Jensen up front. Rafael Araujo doing everything Steve Cleveland wants and more. Mike Hall and what a season so far for our Luis Lemus at the point. Now the head coaches, Steve Cleveland, last year's Mountain West Conference Coach of the Year. Fifth all-time already in wins at BYU with 117. And Randy Bennett, 32 and 40. But Craig Hislop, he's bringing in kind of a Steve Cleveland turnaround. Won just two games before he took over. Then nine, two years ago, 15 last year. And all Already eight and five this year. The tip-off presented by Crystal Inn, where we delight every guest every day, one at a time. Controlled by the Cougars and Luis Salamis, the point guard from Sao Paulo. Let's see if the ball goes inside like Steve Cleveland has designed this offense to work. Inside first. It's an inside-out offense. St. Mary's very solid defensively, giving up only 37% from the floor, just 27% from three. Lemus penetrates. You see already the work being done by the Gales inside. Lemus for three. Around and Araujo big on the boards. Loose ball down low. Jump ball. And it's going to be possession arrow to the Gales. Solid first possession defensively for St. Mary's. Yep, it went with uh, the uh, the senior, the 6'8 senior, Aji Wanyu, and uh, Kicker did not start on him defensively in the post. Cougars come out. Customary man-to-man. -man. Once in a while, they'll go zone just to change it up or to protect Araujo if they're in foul trouble. St. Mary's spacing is key for them offensively. His kicker, a little floater in the lane over Jared Jensen, a hard guard for anybody, particularly tonight for Mr. Jared Jensen. We'll skip past to Bigelow. I call. Solid season so far for BYU, the All-American JC transfer from Dixie State. As yet, now, Adarujo has not touched the ball in the set offense. All around the free throw line, won't go. There's Jared Jensen with the block. Offensive rebound, he'll go to the free throw line as Ajuanu picks up the early first foul. This is the second offensive rebound in as many trips for BYU. Strong play by Jensen and then fouled on the uh, after the ball fake, so he'll go to the free throw line where he's about a 68% shooter. A correction, it was Kickert, which is important for the Cougars. They'd rather have foul trouble go to Daniel Kickert, get him off the floor. Here, Jensen, 68% free throw shooter. What a year two years ago when he broke in as a freshman, co Mountain West Conference Freshman of the Year. Solid support for Araujo down low. The scouting report for this team says their big guys will shoot from outside, so that means the size for BYU's got to extend out with them. And the early turnover. Araujo with the hands involved in the defense, and it goes off the leg of Ajoanu. This is Araujo and Ajuanu, Craig. I knew you might have a little trouble with that. So far, you're perfect. Well, it's early. <laughs> St. Mary's has made an average of 19 turnovers a game, which is uh, quite a bit in college basketball. Almost a strip there. Lemus making a lot of great decisions. Big surprise, the coaching staff in Australia with his ability to run the point during their summer tour. He won the job there, and he's continued to impress all season. Look at all the passing, maybe a little too much in that instance. Three, two, one on the shot clock. Hall, let's fly. Just like Coach Cleveland drew it up. <laughs> And the Cougars enjoying a robust and loud, if not huge, crowd here at the Marriott Center. It is, of course, in between sessions. Here goes Ajoanu. Difficult shot, rebound to Araujo, and here comes Luis Lemus. St. Mary's has done a fine job keeping somebody on Araujo and keeping the ball out of his hands for the most part. Bob pass. 
Parent, and here comes Jonathan Sanders, the transfer. Cougar saw him a couple of years ago at CSU. Didn't play a lot, though. There's Herr, who will pull the trigger. Knocks that down. Tyler Herr. 83 shots this season, now 84. Craig Hislop, and 74 of them are threes. Three seconds called by Rick Hartzell down low. Or check that, Tom O'Neill brings up the three-second call. Ajuan who checks out. This is what happened now as uh, Adaruso is trying to set up, trying to make himself available. He's not working real hard at it right there. Now he puts a hand up, but by then he's been in there too long. He was talking to his teammates on the way down, talked to Mike Hall about that. Early substitution for Randy Bennett, Red Al Ralimi. St. Mary's gets bigger, seven footer. Coming off knee surgery, and Kicker spins right around Jared Jensen. Sweet move. You see some of the ability of Daniel Kicker. Ujo's hit his last three threes. Make that four. This is sort of the reverse. So Steve Cleveland thought he would have trouble defending the big guy shooting long. Here's Hoppe shooting out there, and they, they've got to react to that somehow because they have not been able to get the ball inside to him in this game. Sanders, entry pass thrown away. They're going to call a foul on Reda Ralimi, trying to seal off Ataujo down low. So a double whammy, a turnover, and an offensive foul. Where you head out to break with some special moves from the man from down under, Daniel Kicker, operating. During R.C. Willie's January clearance sale, things can be here today, but gone tomorrow. And when you shop at R.C. Willie, you... ...members can check in from their home or office at Delta.com. Look at the numbers early, Craig. Pretty good. All these... All this defense played by these two teams for nothing so far. Yeah, St. Mary's is impressive the way they uh, cut and they space the floor nicely. And her is, uh, I mean, uh, not her, but the uh, the big guy, uh, 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 Kicker, has been very active to the basket. Done a nice job. There's Ralimi with the rebound, and down they come. Kicker always willing to pull the trigger. Jake Schof has checked in. And now they call a five-second violation. Scott Thornwell, after Steve Cleveland begged him for about five seconds, <laughs> finally called the five seconds. And eventually the pass was uh, intercepted anyway, but yeah, they were, they, this was easily a five-second count. Here's Steve in the corner on the right side helping out the officials, and finally the call was made. Yeah. Bigelow, what a game. That's Santa Clara when he hit the game winner. Ataujo rejected. That doesn't happen very often. Here comes Roland. Pushing the break, looking around, trying to penetrate. Jonathan Sanders will let fly. And there's a triple. One of the concerns for the Cougars coming in was an uncharacteristic ease with which other teams have been shooting the three. Oh, the last uh, two or three games, I think it's over 50% that the uh, BYU team has been yielding, and that is very un unusual in the Steve Cleveland era. Be ready, be ready. Ball thinking about the three down low to Araujo, spinning right around Ralimi, and it goes. Rafael Araujo, strong down low. That's the second very good, solid post feed that BYU has made. And you know what's going on, Tom? They're getting it down lower toward the baseline where there aren't quite as many people to defend Hoffa. Let's take a look at Hoffa working down low. Yeah, this one is here where he's man on man with Ralimi, the bigger guy. The first time he tried that, the shot was blocked. But the last two times, or the last time down, he got a clear shot at it. Kevin Woodbury checks in for Mike Hall. Foul number one, picked up by Rafael Araujo. Sitting down, Tyler Herr. And checking in for the first time, number 55, Paul Marigny. This is a kid who can light it up. Missed all of last year with ACL, 55 in blue for St. Mary's. The jump hook, Aaron Bigelow with the rebound quickly to Luis Lemus. Head up, running the floor to Bigelow. Araujo spinning and rocking and rolling. And flips it right over the seven-footer. 
Got a 6'11 guy from Sao Paulo, Brazil, doing business against a seven-footer from Morocco. And look at that. Bodies flying everywhere. Things really changed. Mark Bigelow is down, and Lemus is concerned. It appears that Bigelow is in... He is not moving. Let's see what happened here, Craig. The shot goes uh, up, and then the, the battle for it, and Bigelow and Adarusha, oh, and look, Hoffa wow. got him right in the face. Oh, and Hoffa's not a small man. That was a solid elbow right to the head. And watch from this angle. Ooh. Oh, well, Hoppe man. got hit in the head by somebody else, and yeah. he was concerned about that injury and didn't even realize what he'd done to his teammate. Mark Bigelow is a running zip code questions by him right about now. Wow. Look at it from a low angle on the uh, court. Now watch the ball go up. Their right elbow now as Hoppe got hit in the head. Oh. He turned and <laughs> was concerned about the head uh, butt that he had gotten and didn't know, I don't think, that he had done that to Mark. Big shot from Araujo. We'll keep our eye on Bigelow at the end of the bench. Kicker from the corner. Around and back rebound to roll on the point guard. They'll set him out of the spacing. St. Mary's way wide trying to set up their offense. Jonathan Sanders thinking about it. Kicker pulled the trigger from anywhere. Being bodied by Jake Show. And there's a foul. That's a tough guard for Jake Schoff. It's 6'9 and, and 265 plus. Schoff had to come in to replace Jensen. Now Jensen comes on. Hoffa Adarujo will take a rest. They had just brought in Aji Wanyu, who had defended Hoffa so well early on. And then Hoffa was having his way the last few trips down. Now Aji Wanyu's back. And there's Marigny. Just about an air ball. Nice flip back for Jonathan Sanders with an offensive rebound. And we're knotted up at a dozen. We expected this close a game. High quality basketball so far. And both teams are doing a pretty good job with second chance points. And the early on, BYU was getting a couple of offensive rebounds. And lately now, it's been the games. Kevin Woodbury can light it up off the bench. There's Schoff working the baseline. Kicker trying to cut him off. That's a body foul. Number two, which is key. Here's something we don't see Jake do a lot of, a very strong guy to the basket, and Kicker was simply out of position and got the personal foul. Chase Poole checks in, one of the senior leaders, Adujo and Bigelow laughing about it. <laughs> Mark, so what's your name again? <laughs> Paul with Sanders watching him, and now Marigny on Lemus. Very right around rolling. Plenty of time. Jensen for Hall. Almost working the baseline. Offensive foul as he pushed off on Marigny. Scott Thornwell all over that call. Looked like the right forearm. And that technically goes down as a turnover on Lemus, which he has made very few of this year. An offensive foul is a turnover. His uh, assist to turnover ratio is something like 64-23. Yes. So here comes a guy, Nashif, who gets a chance to play. And his, his playing time has been all over the place lately. Yeah. Speaking of assist to turnover, he led the Mountain West in Mountain West games in assist to turnover ratio. Terry Nashif did. So taking care of the basketball, obviously a premium with him. And Ajawanu walking right around Jake Schoff for two. Skill position with the bigs. That's what St. Mary's brings. And we really haven't seen a lot of what Marigny can do. We're told he is a very strong dribble driver to the basket. Woodbury down to Jared Jensen, spinning around. Tough shot. And Tom O'Neill is going to ring up Ajuanu. Number is first. Jensen back to the free throw line. Which is where the game started for uh, BYU. They double teamed that time the post. I mean, he had a clear pass to the post, and then Sanders came over, and initially it looked like Sanders got the foul. Tyler Hurt checks back in for the Gales. 
E.J. Rowland will sit down. I like what Randy Bennett, the scales coach, told us. He said, hey, you were picked, you were picked second behind Gonzaga in the, in the West Coast Conference. He said, what are they thinking? <laughs> but he's, uh, he's sitting on a good team here. This is a guy, uh, when you talk about Randy Bennett, who started his coaching career at Idaho as an assistant under Tim Floyd. And he's coached with some very good head coaches. And doing a good job here tonight. St. Mary's up one. We're about midway through the first half. It's a good one and rebounding 18th and scoring an 18th and field goal percentage. Who am I? We would call you Hoffa, the three-point shooter in this case. That's his first basket, and then he starts working down low, but against a different defender is when he really got going. Again, the low post pass from Bigelow, and he does his uh, work this time on Ralimi, and he's hit three or four shots so far, Tom, in the game, and still his team is down by one. Rebounding numbers are a little shy for a man averaging a double-double. A sweet move rejected by Hall. There's a jump ball. And that's going to be Cougar ball. Looked like a nice move, but Mike Hall was ready for it. Well, you know, what we saw there were two very good athletic guys. I think J Jonathan Sanders has impressed us tonight, but he wasn't good enough to get past Mike Hall that time, who's a little bit shorter, but very quick defensively. Asher working against Marigny. Second leading scorer, second leading rebounder for the Cougars. We skip pass to Jensen. Nice down low to Adaujo. Triple team jump ball, possession arrow. Gonna go the other way. Back to back. Jump ball possession arrow. BYU Tom did a good job that time of finally getting the ball into the post, but then Hoffa waited too long, and that gave time for people to get around. Look at the triple team, and there was nothing. In fact, four guys around him by the time he decided what he wanted to do with the ball. You see those numbers. By the way, Mark Bigelow back on the floor. St. Mary's taking advantage of the Cougar turnovers early. Garner Meads also has checked in, and they go right to work on it. Good work by Meads. Bigelow comes away with the rebound. Woodbury pushing it. Swatted away by Chase Poole. Ball on the ground and Adeujo again. Comes away with it. Garner Meads created the steal and Hoffa grabbed it. I'm telling you, I'm impressed with what St. Mary's is doing in the post defense here, Tom. Doing a solid job off the hall. Missed. Sanders with another rebound. Dribbles it up. Skip pass over to her. Now down low. Ajoano against Adeujo. Little rock and roll underneath. Flips it up and in. He's showing us some things. 6'5", 6 6'8", 6 225-pound senior from France. He had 17 and 11 rebounds at Arizona. One of the reasons they feel like they should have won there. See the defensive work way out there. Kevin Woodbury screaming out the number. Needs to Bigelow. Hasn't pulled the trigger from three yet. Drives in, throws it up. He'll shoot a pair. Let's go back to the move by the big Frenchman. Now watch Hoppe defensively and watch how this guy kind of ducks under as Hoppe tried to get position. Nice quickness by Ajiwanu. At the other end, here's Bigelow going to the basket and earning a couple of free throws on that foul. They ring up Chase Poole, his first. Let's see, so far on the floor, Craig, we've had players from Melbourne, Australia, from France, from Morocco, and then, of course, the Cougars have a couple of guys from Sao Paulo, Brazil. That's the nature of the game anymore, Tom. That's right. You know, it's time to hit the slopes, and Alta is for skiers. Right now, log on to sportswest.tv and enter to win two all-day ski passes at one of the nation's premier resorts, Alta. Bigelow knocks down the free throw. Just under halfway to go in the first half. Defensive struggle. Roland carries it, and they call it a travel. Another turnover. Talking to, about Roland, who uh, is the point guard for St. Mary's, we were 
uh, talking about the great uh, assist to turnover ratio that Lemus has got going. Roland is pretty much just the opposite. He is uh, thrown for 59 assists, but he's given the ball up now 50 times this yeah. year. You don't like to see that many people. Uh, you want yard. about a two to one ratio from your point guard. Bigelow pulls the string from three. Look at the battle for the rebound, and Roland comes away with it. Junior college transfer. Look at the scoring drought. Cougars unable to score. But they're hanging around. First skip pass. There's a bump and a hoop for number 33. That's Blake Schulberg, the seven-footer of the redshirt freshman from California. Bigelow baseline. Lays it up and in. Making his 101st start. You talk about having a career. He seemed to turn 24. Veteran leader, Marigny, difficult shot, bounces around, and there's going to be a foul on Schulberg over the back of Rafael. That field goal by BYU a minute ago after that long drought was simply a case of Steve Cleveland telling uh, Bigelow, go to the basket. We're having trouble getting the ball to any of our post people. Let's go on a dribble drive, and they'll probably forget about you. Sanders back in, and Marigny will sit down. Kicker back in with two fouls. That's something to watch. Cougars would love to have him pick up his third. Ball on Sanders. Up and down, and there's Schulberg. So the big seven-footer has a couple off the bench. This is Hall, who again is very active, going against a bigger man, but getting nice position, and then drawing the foul on the uh, bigger guy. And it's good to have the people that are doing a lot of driving to the basket also be good free-throw shooters. Hall is an 81% shooter. I didn't even get a chance to say that before he missed. Hey, see? Happens every time. I'm usually the one doing it. Thank you for taking the pressure off me. He missed two. And there's Garner Meads battling through a couple of gales. And Araujo for three. Not close. And the timeout called by Hall, who made the offensive rebound recovery in midair, and then got the timeout. So an ugly situation there. Comes away looking pretty good for the Cougars. Take a look at this. This is Otterujo's 15th three-point attempt this season in his 12th game. So a little over one a game, and uh, that probably will be it for a little while. It's like the uh, BYU offense has gone inside out, outside in yep. now. That's uh, because of the Gales' tough defense down low. Otterujo had made his last four three-pointers. That might <laughs> make him think twice. But he, he has remarkable skills. When you think of the fact that he's 6'11 and 280, see the numbers. St. Mary's has yet to go to the free throw line. The Cougars not converting. Well, those numbers were reversed for BYU in that cable oh, car yeah. classic rather decidedly. Yeah. And 30 to 11, I believe, was the number in favor of Santa Clara, but the Cougars still won. Hall down low, throws it up. Bodies all over the place. Araujo skip pass for Bigelow, hauls it down. Mark trying to pull the trigger. Sanders is guarding Hapa Rujo down low, so and I think BYU is trying to figure out a way to get to him. But these, these guys, even when they're yep. smaller, are very active on him. They're battling. Three-second violation, another turnover. St. Mary's ball. Just over eight minutes to go. Getting a good look at a team pick to contend with Gonzaga for the West Coast Conference crown. Sanders skips over. Now Kicker thinking about it, puts it on the floor. Difficult shot, banks around and out. Anaujo says that's mine and sends Lemus out with the ball. Big load of Anaujo, ball on the ground. Now he'll try a three. Around and in. Big load ties Anaujo to a game high with seven points. Tough shot inside, there's a rebound for Schulberg and a foul call. Mark Bigelow picks up the foul. You can hear Randy Bennett right there. Every time there's a foul, he's, he's hoping it's on 55 out of Ujo. <laughs> you hear him every time, 55. <laughs> okay, now here's a guy that's a 50% free throw. Yeah, he is. Four for eight, of course. Uh, the 
the numbers Craig referred to, 50%. He hits two, though. We're going to step aside here. 20s all the way around. You're watching College Basketball on Sports West. We're back after a message from your local station. Special rates on your next day. Log on to LQ.com and book your reservation today. Every La Quinta, every time. There's Daniel Kickert. Veteran now of college basketball at St. Mary's, making his 44th straight start. A star in Melbourne, Australia. Bigelow. Spinning around, throws it up, around and in. And that's a sign that you're breaking out of it a little bit when you get a <laughs> shot like that to go in. Rolling, penetrates in. Big pin by Araujo. This is what Bigelow did at the other end. Tom off balance, bad oh, yeah. angle, the whole bit, and it still went in. Brent Collins in. There's Kicker. Joanna tipped away by Araujo. Going to set things up. Looking to spring kicker for a shot here. He'll try Brett Collins. Penetrates around and out. Rebound to Otto Ujo. Starting to pile up the boards now. Lemus kicks it over to Bigelow. Wide open for three. Around and out. Bodies flying. Garner Meads will pick up the battle, the foul battling for the offensive rebound. This is a Bigelow thinking that he's starting to get a little rhythm going here, but that one's off, and then basically Garner Meads was just off balance trying to battle with two or three of the uh, blue jerseys, and that was an obvious foul. First on Garner, Jake Schoff comes in to replace him. Rolling, skipping around, you see him spacing Collins down low, intercepted by Schoff, but he stepped out of bounds. Great anticipation. What a contribution this season from Jake Schoff, who's been battling all kinds of injuries. Coach Cleveland says, you know, he's not in great shape, really hasn't had a chance to play a whole lot. Coming off a Cougar career high, 28 minutes and 12 rebounds at Santa Clara in that gut-wrenching win to win the Cable Car Classic last week. There's Kicker, knocked down, and here comes Hall. For Bigelow. Sends it back to Levis. And Hall. All the way in. Spins it around and out. Here comes E.J. Rowland. Kerr throws up a prayer. Not answered. Schoff with the rebound. Lemus skips down to Hall. What a move by Hall. Hands off to Adujo, and he misses the layup. <laughs> Tough fade away by Hoffa. Adelujo with nine and six rebounds. Looking for his sixth straight double-double. It's the biggest lead of the game, I think, Tom, for either team. To give you an idea of the defense we're seeing, the percentages are going to be fairly low, I think, at halftime because we're seeing very solid defensive play. Rowan spins around, throws it up, rebound to Schoff. Cougars start to get open in transition. Looking a lot more in rhythm now. Download out of Ujo. There's easy. An easy two. Solid entry pass from Luis Lemos to his fellow Brazilian, Rafael Araujo. Crowd enjoying it. Well, BYU has put together a, a run of something like 11 to 2, and this is the most recent basket as they get the lob behind everybody. They were standing. That's unusual for them in this game, especially number 50 you saw there, Aji Wanyu, who's done such a great job defensively on uh, Hava Araujo in the, in the first half. But this, I think, now makes, what, um, 11 points for BYU to two free throws for St. Mary's in about the last four minutes. They, their offense is pretty much the ground to, to a halt. No question, the Cougar defense forcing the Gales into several forced shots as they're unable to get kickered loose. 
and they're unable to get to the places they want on the offensive side. Dodge and Sports West are teaming up to give you a chance to win a 2004 Dodge Ram truck. Simply go to sportswest.tv and click on the picture of the Ram truck for entry instructions and contest rules. The winner will be announced at the end of the basketball season in March. Log on to sportswest.tv and enter now for your chance to win a 2004 Dodge Ram. From Sports West and Dodge, grab life by the horns. I think a big story defensively for BYU is Marigny has just done nothing, and he's been a very active and very good scorer for them. He's going to pick up the ball here and maybe try to get something going. And they're going to have Jared Jensen trying to seal off Ajuanu down low. Who's first? This is a look at it. You see Jared in the left side of your picture trying to reach in, but bodying pretty strong and sending Ajuanu to the floor. Hurst gets it back to Schulberg. Check that. That's Chase Poole. Now Marigny, the guy that Randy Bennett wants to get going here. Rolling. In and over Schoff. A big hoop for St. Mary's. 26-22. Cougars looking to pull away a little bit. The Gales hanging around on that hoop. Bigelow wide open for three. Adding to his all-time career three-point total. Three-point kid here at BYU. Boy, St. Mary's completely lost him that time in the offense. He took a step to the middle, cut through a couple of screens at the free throw line, and he was uncontested. Lemus all over him. Penetrates, sets up, back to her. Here's your three-point shooter. 38%. That's his 30th of the season. Already has two here. Two for two tonight. Six points. It's the best ball movement we've seen from St. Mary's in quite a while. And I think a lot of that has to do with what BYU's doing defensively. Bigelow looking much more comfortable now. Penetrates. What a reverse. for Mark Bigelow. Maybe the breakout game they've been looking for, although he has been playing well lately. There's Marigny blowing right by and in for an easy deuce. Araujo <laughs> getting ready to check back in for Steve Cleveland. Meantime, Lemus penetrates, and uh, he's bumped. They're going to ring up Paul Marigny. His first. Wholesale substitutions. Hall and Araujo back in. Jensen and Bigelow sit down. Ajuanu out along with her. And the big guy, Scholberg, back in along with Brett Collins. Here's Lemus, a guy who, as you said, won that point guard job when he played so well on the Australian trip. Rarely goes to the free throw line, maybe once or twice a game where he's about a 70% shooter. We we're talking about his excellent assist to turnovers uh, in the big win at the Cable Car Classic Championship game against Santa Clara. Eight assists, no turnovers. Makes good decisions and one of the great post feeders in all of college basketball. He knows how to set up Rafael Araujo. Mark Bigelow loose on St. Mary's in the first half. Telecasts and be sure to enter to win exciting prizes, tickets, and special promotions from these featured sponsors. Log on now at sportswest.tv, powered by I4 Solutions. Statistical oddity, I think, Tom, at this point is only four athletes have shot for BYU. Bigelow's five for eight. Adarujo's five for nine. He, Hall's had a couple rattle right out on him. He's yep. one for five. And then Lemus had the one-shot attempt, and that's it. Several players, probably everybody that's gotten on the court yeah. for St. Mary's. All shot. ten St. Mary's guys who played have hoisted it up. There's Marigny. Randy Bennett would like him to get going. Collins looking for some help and has Roland. Roland has the baseline, loses the ball. Shot clock at ten now. Not a lot of offense being generated by St. Mary's. They're going to have to hoist something up. Roland penetrating. Swatted away. But at the buzzer.
buzzer. There is Marigny, right where he needed to be off the Ataujo slot. So 55 sets up 55 for a hoop. Well, you wondered how long Marigny would be quiet. He scored two quick field goals after getting nothing the first 16, 17 minutes of the game, and, and uh, that's probably not going to last. Show is in. Showing mad crossover dribble. Jake Show blew by everybody, lays it up and in. is much more aggressive, I think, uh, tonight. It's more of a dribble drive game than a low post yep. uh, entry pass game. Blake Collins showing a nice move with the left hand up and over and down. St. Mary's hanging right here with the Cougars who have won 39 in a row on this floor against non-conference opponents. It's tough for anybody to win here. Otto Ujo for three. Rolling with the board and now St. Mary's in some space now. Rolling right by Woodbury, and he'll shoot a couple. DJ Rowland had a solid game at Arizona in that near upset of the Wildcats. 39 minutes, 11 points, 7 rebounds. This is a guy that played at Hartnell College in California, transferred to St. Mary's, was a great junior college free throw shooter, 83%, but at St. Mary's, up until right then, 55%. He's had a lot of chances this year because he's very active. Yeah, 30. he's missed 30 free throws. And uh, for a point guard, that'll hurt you in a lot of games. You can see his obvious quickness on the break as he went right around Kevin Woodbury, who's very swift as well. He has two right there, and St. Mary's pulls back to within two. Interesting, Steve Cleveland said they won't be intimidated here, and there's been a couple opportunities where BYU looked like they were going to maybe make a move and blow them out, but not to be. Bigelow forces a shot. Jake Schoff with extra effort goes into the wall, but still ends up being a turnover. The big play of the half is presented by Xbox Live. Here's the Xbox big play. Mike Hall beating the three-point, uh, beating the, the shot clock buzzer with the three-point hoist there. Sanders. Travel. One of the refs had an offensive foul, but they'll go with Rick Hartzell's travel, although Tom O'Neill had signaled an offensive foul. Lemus checking in for Woodbury. Let's take a look here. Watch and see if he puts a, a, yeah. an arm into Bigelow's face here. Yeah, he did. Bigelow's taking a little bit of a, a punishment in this game. His face in particular. Ajuanu <laughs> has checked back in for Randy Bennett. We are winding down to the end of a swift first half, just as we expected. It's a tight one. Two-point lead for the Cougars. Shot clock is off. What you see is what you get right up to the end of the half. Lemus calling things out here. Araujo sealing off Ajuanu. Hall will try a three. No, he won't. Bigelow will. And that will do it. St. Mary's with a solid first half. Cougars knew what they were in for, and they've played a pretty good first half as well. BYU walking away with a two-point lead here at the half at the season high. That was against USC here in their blowout of the Trojans. His career high, of course, way back in his freshman year when Mark had 33. Story this week in the uh, Tribune by Patrick Kinahan sort of outlined the uh, the career, first, second, third, and fourth years of Mark Bigelow and how the numbers have gone down and this chat that he had with the head coach. Mm -hmm. And obviously something worked. It seems like he's just playing a little freer tonight and uh, working like the Mark Bigelow of old. No question. You know, the key for, for Mark from Coach Cleveland is, you know, be Mark Bigelow. There are several things you can do to help us do those things and lead by experience. And he's been through so many situations. It's 100 and first start, so you know he's seen everything. Now, St. Mary started or finished strong the first half. They outscored BYU eight to four the last couple of minutes. Let's see what happens here in the first possession. Luis Lamas normally right on with his entry pass. That one just over the fingertips of Ataujo. The early turnover. St. Mary's comes down with a chance to tie and maybe take the lead. Three ties in the game, seven lead changes to give you an idea of the defensive battle this has been for the kicker football. goes right around Ataujo and they call a travel. 
Little ball fake got Hoffa up. Daniel went to the dribble drive all the way in. Took a few too many. Let's see. See if we can take one, two, and maybe a third step. Uh, meantime, Rick Hartzell brings up a foul on St. Mary's. Hey, 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 Jonathan Sanders is second. Lemus clears, has the ball. Looking for Bigelow off the screen. Mark, catch, shoot. Front rim, rebound, E.J. Rowland. Stutter steps, spins right around, over the corner to Teammate kicks inside. Ajuanu spinning and it's stripped by Lemus. A lot of activity. Luis penetrates. And two. Carter will hoist the three. No rebounder except Michael. The quick shot that coaches don't like to see. Cougars are happy with that. Now Bigelow down low. Ataujo spinning this way and that. Round no. Rebound to her. Now Roland with three on three. Sanders back out to Roland. Ajuanu will try a three. No, sir. For the record, he's two for ten now from three points. I was going to say, that surprised <laughs> me, but he had it loaded and felt it. Steve Cleveland will give that shot up all night. Ball working around the screen from Ataujo. Crosses over nicely. Nobody can get a shot to go down. Jensen battling for the offensive rebound. Can't get it. Gales basketball. Marigny checks in for Jonathan Sanders. And Schof in for Jensen. You know, Hall is now one for six with that miss. And I, it seems like every shot that he's missed has rattled out yep. in this game tonight. Surprising for a guy who comes in shooting 56%. So he's not used to that at all either. And Juana looking around, looking around. Back out to Kickert. And Roland will set things back up at the top of the circle. Entry pass to Kickert. Schoff with the deflection. And a foul on Roland to stop the break. Cougars up four, early second half. Lemus from the corner for three. Luis Lemus doing a little bit of everything for Steve Cleveland this year. Kickard unable to get going here this evening. Cougars have done a nice job. Keeping him away from places on the floor he wants to get to. Nice backdoor cut. And the big block by Ataujo. Crowd getting into it. And they're running the floor. Lemus, jumper. <laughs> and that's it. Randy Bennett says, give me a time out over here. we got to talk to Silver. As the Cougars starting to separate a little bit. It's a nine-point lead. And it's Lemus 7, St. Mary's nothing in the second half. Here's look at the, the rejection shot. here. And look at uh, pretty much Hoffa goes straight up in the air, which is what centers are taught to do. Be big, but stand yep. straight up. And yep. we did that defensively that Yeah, time. you can see the coaching of Dave Rose and Steve Cleveland has worked there on Ataujo. He went into that block, as you mentioned, both hands up to show the referee that, yeah, hey, I'm, I'm clean and I'm away from the body. Well, that's why the fouls that he's had called on him have gone way down this year, Tom. All right, Craig, let's look at the updated conference standings presented by Zions Bank. We haven't forgotten who keeps us in business. BYU, these are all, of course, based on non-conference numbers. The conference starts in earnest in about 10 days, just as expected, except look at Air Force. Joe Scott, they've won four in a row. They won a tournament at Cal, upsetting the Bears. You know, you look at the standings in the preseason, Air Force is a surprise to me. And then you look at the Sagarin ratings with putting BYU 19th in the country, and then Utah, UNLV, Wyoming, and Air Force in that order. And they actually, according to Sagarin, New Mexico, you see there is, is maybe the worst team in the, in the league right now. Zions Bank Conference standings. 
Take a look at more activity from the big fella from Sao Paulo, Rafael Araujo. Look at that, 11 points, four blocks, and his rebounds are starting to add up. He's got seven of those, too. But it's I've heard everything from lottery pick next year to somewhere. Talked to Gordy Chiesa, the Jazz assistant this past week. He thought he was somewhere in 20 to 28 range of the first round. No question, though, he's a first round draft pick. I think there's no question of that, and uh, he'll just have chances for the next you know, two months to show people that. And the Cougars defense starting to wear down St. Mary's. This Hall with a steal. He's going to take it in. Knocked away. There's Bigelow. And Lemus will reset. Cougars on a 7-0 run. Lemus on a 7-0 run. He has nine points for the game now. Now Hoffa spins right around. There's a two. Very easy when he gets that kind of depth for position. Spinning right around the seven-footer Schulberg. Roland looking for help. Enters it to Schulberg. Swatted away. Schof has it. Simpson, bit of a blowout here now as BYU has come out of the locker room on fire. Hoffa for three. The place will go nuts. Oh, front rim. And that'll be a foul on Mark Bigelow. As Tom O'Neill says, Bigelow with the block on EJ Rowland. Three pointers, a story here. There's one to beat the shot clock. Knocks that down, that Hoffa. And on Mark Bigelow's, let's see, Lemus, threes. We're stepping aside. Ma'am, you may want to take cover. We've had some reports of wild animals in the area. Ooh, my. Come on, Donnie. Planning software when you purchase any handheld device at Franklin Chevy. Luis getting the job done. Seven points. Just two assists. That's low for him. And at the same time, it's been almost six minutes, Tom, since St. Mary's has scored. They went about, at least from the field, about a couple of minutes at the end of the first half, and nothing, obviously, here in the second half of play. Jonathan Sanders checks back in. Tyler Hur sits down. Schulberg and Marigny waiting for him to explode. Sweet move in the paint. Right on cue. And they're back within nine. Schulberg spins right around him. Off the rim, rebound to Sanders. There's Marini for three. Around and out. Bigelow has the board, and they'll call the foul on the big fellow Blake Schulberg, I believe. Yes, Schulberg. His second. Daniel Kicker checks back in. Chase Poole sits down. Kicker, we saw there, has been anything but the uh, low post type player we, we saw. He likes to roam around the perimeter and get his shots from outside. Lemus with a second errant post entry. Right, right after I said he was one of the best, best <laughs> post passers in the country, he's had a couple of turnovers. Kicker, we, you, you mentioned his struggles. He has just four points. He leads the team getting 16 a game. He was just the MVP of the Gales Christmas tournament when he averaged almost 19 points and 10 rebounds. So if they're going to get back in it, he's going to have to lead the way. And there's Bigelow down low. Number three on number three. Take a look at the action down low, Craig. This is how it happened with uh, Marigny holding the ball over his head, the low post pass, and Bigelow jostling there with Sanders got the personal. And that'll earn him a spot on the bench with 14 points. There's Kicker, a little long and strong over the top. See who they're going to get for that. 
That's going to be Daniel Kicker. That's his third. That's almost as many fouls as points here, and that's a stunner. Mike Hall has checked in to replace Mark Piccolo. by Roland, it's a two on one. Lays it up and in, Roland. You see some of his athletic ability. Makes the steal, takes it all the way past Woodbury for the deuce. Roland looked to pass, but then the passing lane was cut off by Hall, so he decided it's one on one all the way. He did a nice job to finish it. Straight <laughs> three up, there's Hall. Zadujo down low. Little baby hook around and out. Rebound to Kicker. St. Mary's putting together a little bit of a run here. Roland kicks out. Kicker penetrates. And that's an offensive foul. And he's got four. He's got a, got a little grin on his face. Lemus, great position. And the big guy from Australia has to know, with three fouls, he, he can't go driving into the paint around the little guys. But uh, in the, at the same time, there was, it didn't seem to be any move by the bench to get him out, just counting on his, even as a sophomore, his intelligence to try to stay away from that fourth foul. It only took a minute from the third and the fourth. Look at the shooting uh, difference between first and second half for St. Mary's. St. Mary's both are really struggling, but they're, they're still within seven here. And Otto Ujo. Spinning right around to Lemus, who throws up a shot, and there's Garner Meads, and then out of Ujo. And St. Mary's finally comes away with it. That's the big guy, Blake Schulberg, the seven-footer. And Roland doing business, and there's another offensive foul as Lemus stays in front, draws the contact, and Roland can't believe it. Here's Roland just a little bit out of control as the collision yep. was made. Solid position again for Luis Lemus, and you see some of the little things he does. St. Mary's starting to pile on the turnovers, but you mentioned that's not so unusual for them. Well, they average 19 a game, but that's 19 chances missed. Hoffa with the put back that looked curiously like a backboard pass from Lemus. I'm sure he'll tell us that's what it was. Nine point lead, Poole now. Looking for a little bit of room on Hall. They're going to call a bump on Hall. Number number three on Mike Hall. Otto Ujo will sit down. Jared Jensen comes in. This is Hall against Marigny. Two fairly quick players and the contact at the free throw line. And the official, Scott Thornley, says Hall was on the move. The halftime score was 35-33 BYU, Tom. That's hardly looking like a normal halftime score here where BYU wins 87-60 to in five games so far. So credit to St. Mary's. Ricky spins on Hall and banks it home and Hall laughs. Gives him a little chuckle. Thank you very much, but it still counts and St. Mary's hanging around. Wide open for three. Schulberg did not continue to contest it, and Lemus has shown he can knock it down. And there's a high flying attempt at an offensive board from Sanders, goes out of bounds. Ajuanu checks back in, so does Nashif. And on that note, Randy Bennett, not so happy. His team's down 10. Steve Cleveland feeling a little bit better on a variety of things. Look at the steal here, and he's had a couple of three-point shots. This layup on a nice fake, and they kept his body in control, but here on the three-pointer, and then another in the long range, maybe a 10-foot shot, and then the uh, final one is another three-point shot. People forget this guy's a 46% three-point shooter. I was just going to make that point. He's been sneaky good this year from beyond the arc. It's part of the package that makes him the starting point guard. Now they're going to work all down low. Nashif wide open for three. Around and out. Ball's knocked around. Gardner Meads hustles it. 
And Woodbury saves it once again. Hustle points for Garner Meads off the bench. it up a little, there's Jensen, it's swatted away. That was Chase Poole with the nice defensive play. Sanders is fouled, what are they gonna call? They're gonna send him to the line for a couple. Look at the work there by Meads to Woodbury. Jared Jensen picks up his second foul on that collision with Jonathan Sanders. Sanders goes to the line. Better than a 78% free throw shooter. 79, better than 79, that is. Lemus back in along with Ataujo. Nash and Jensen out. Now Bigelow's back in along with Tyler Herr for St. Mary's. E.J. Rowland will sit down. BYU fans are wondering when does their team pull out to the 20-point lead that they've seen in every other game this year. I mean, they beat Southern Utah by 34 here, Utah Valley by 19, Western Oregon by more than 30, 21 over Southern Cal, 21 over uh, uh, Weber State. That's, yeah. that's typical yeah, in they, this building. They blow people out. And it still could happen here. St. Mary's hanging around with some gutty work and playing defense well. They haven't shot it well here in the second half. And they're back within eight. 11 minutes to go here in the ball game. He was always looking for Adeujo down though. He's locked up with Ajuanu. Meads flips it around. Bigelow flips it up and in. Thank you very much, says Mark. A little bit of improv gets him a banker. Marigny will throw up the three. Knocked around. Ajuanu back to her. BYU really got away with one down to the other end. Alderusha really never left the lane that whole exchange. Skip pass over to Ajuanu. Sanders falls down. Gets it over. Stolen by Alderusha. It's a little bit ugly here. Cougars will take it. And Lennis goes into BYU territory here. Entry pass to Ataujo. They're going to call a three-second violation first as he had a nice seal off on Ajuanu and took a little too long to do it. That was nearly as flagrant a violation as the last time down when Bigelow finally ended up getting that layup, but I guess things even out in the game yeah. of basketball. Yeah, they do. Sanders looking over Randy Bennett. Gets the play out that he wants. So Kickert's back on with four fouls and really hasn't added much offensively toward a 16 points a game average to lead this team. Cougars have done an excellent job bottling him up. And Jake Schoaf has been on him for several minutes tonight. And there's a foul on Araujo. On Ajoanu. You try that. <laughs> Number two on big number 55. You see him, it may have been on the swim move yep. to go across there. That's right. No, I'm still back in the Weber State game. I got a Sokovic down, but then he didn't show up. You nailed that. The other guy, forget it. <laughs> oh, there's there a big guy. I'm not going back to that one. Sanders having some problems, and he calls a timeout. Slips down again in that same area. Has the presence of mind to call the timeout. And let's look at the upcoming schedules for these teams presented by La Quinta Hotels. Every La Quinta, every time. You see they go to NC State. That's a, that'll be a tough one at Raleigh. And then it all starts in earnest a week from Monday, 10 days from now, right here on Sports West, San Diego State. Then they come home 
for the front range back-to-back, the Rams and the Wyoming Cowboys, and they later on go to Air Force. Initially, that uh, first game, North Carolina State, was scheduled earlier in the next week, and that's why this game, they, they wanted it to, to be at a different time to give them more time to get ready for this game. But now they're playing it on Friday, and then they go to NC State and then get ready for league play. It was sort of a scheduling mix-up. Craig, you know the best part of that schedule right there? The, those, those four Sports West logos. That's they're right. all right here on Sports West. The Cougars try to get off to a fast start in a conference. They're picked to win again. Although Steve Cleveland says it all goes through Salt Lake City and Rick Majerus running youths. There's another foul there. There's Jake Schof. His second. Well, the, uh, the Cougars used just about all of their 15 fouls for the three big guys in the Santa Clara game. It's been an, an, an unusual condition for them because Adarujo, for the most part, has, has totally avoided foul trouble, which has been a big difference to them this year. Absolutely. Kicker to the free throw line. Almost a 77 percent. Knocks it down. If they're going to get back into this, and, and they're right there, they're within nine. They've, they've battled back here in the second half despite not shooting that well. And he's going to have to be right in the middle of it, although the four fouls, they make it difficult for him to, to play very aggressively. Eight-point game, Lemus in the forecourt. No show. Bigelow comes hard around the screen. Constantly looking to get it into big number 55. Skip past the hall, entry pass, intercepted, but they're going to call Rafael Adeujo with the clear out. That's number three on Hoffa. And the crowd not chanting Lou for Lemus. They, they didn't like the call. Well, number 50 for St. Mary's is uh, Frederick Ajiwanu, and he has done consistently the best job of battling the bigger Adeujo down low. And the Gales turn it right back over. There's Hall, turned over and Roland leads the way. Ball's knocked around, look at Jake Schoff right in the middle of it. There's Hall! Jake Schoff bringing the house down with the hustle and then Mike Hall putting an exclamation point on it. Sometimes the kind of play, uh, Tom, that can break a game open. Let's yeah. see how St. Mary's answer is here. There's Kickert for three. In and out. Ajawanu making another big play. Gerigny penetrates and an offensive foul as Hall seals him off. Mike Hall has two field goals and they have both been spectacular. <laughs> That fan having a good time. This is how this last play all, well, this is the conclusion of it. Hall has been rattling out all night long. He wanted to make sure that one went straight through the iron. Jake Schoff with some strength down low, and it's a 12-point game. See how St. Mary's handles this. They, they frankly fell apart in the last two minutes at the McHale Center in Tucson when they had Arizona on the ropes. Rolling with Bigelow on him, and there's a travel. Jake Show off the bench, doing the number. You're watching college basketball on Sports West. We're back after a message from your local station. Not only a great assist, but a great defensive play in getting the steal, and then Show added the oh. layup later. And here's, I think the story, and, and it's exemplified by what Schoff just did, is BYU's defense the second half. I mean, St. Mary's, yeah, look at the shooting. That tells Incredible. the story. St. Mary's got three field goals in the first eight minutes. They haven't scored since. Roland comes away with the steal. St. Mary's desperately needed one. Tries to penetrate. Sweet move, and he misses it, and there's Schoff again. And now they're going to call Roland on the reach-in. I 
think I think Shove also brings a certain level of, of emotion that that is, is always helpful. I mean, his effort leads to his emotion, and I think the team feeds off of that. Greg. I think there's no question in his younger, healthier days at Weber State, he they did a statistic, and on per minutes played, he was one of the top rebounders in the country. Yeah. And yeah. you can see when he when he gets into shape, you wonder how good he could be. Absolutely. Coming off is, again, career high here with the Cougars. 28 minutes. Missed the free throw there. It'll be St. Mary's basketball in the finals of the Cable Car Classic when they won at Santa Clara. He had the 28 minutes and 12 rebounds. Remember when Marigny hit the bank shot that wasn't called? He didn't yell bank. That's their last field goal, Tom. They just can't seem to get anything going. They still can't, but there's a put back. Maybe that'll get them going. Blake Schulberg, the big seven-footer, gets the offensive rebound and the putback deuce, and they're still right at 10. BYU hasn't really been able to separate. Hoffa getting ready to check back in. Hall spins around. He's in. Blocked. And Schulberg having a, a roll here as St. Mary's tries to claw back. Again, if they're going to really make it a game, they're going to have to get Kickert involved. There's Collins block. Kickert gets it. Skip pass. There's your three-point shooter. Kickert all over it. Lays it up and in. So a good sequence for the Gales. And Steve Cleveland wants to restore order a little bit. Calls a 30. I think the problem that Steve may be seeing is rebound baskets, the last couple by St. Mary's. That's not something you like to see a team on the road doing in your building. Let's take a look at this last sequence here. Kicker was right there, didn't even see how close he was, and then said, oh, okay, I'm in. Shelf comes over to try to defend it, but by then, Kicker's too close to the basket on an offensive rebound, second chance but the basket. Five of those eight Cougar blocks are by uh, Rafael Araujo. The career high five swats for big number 55. This Sports West College basketball telecast is brought to you in part by Advantage Rent-A-Car. Book online at ARAC.com and receive double frequent rental club points from Advantage. Big up 14 in the first half, two here in the second. See the scales getting back into it thanks to the work on the old board. Well, it, was, it was even at halftime, even. Six offensive rebounds apiece. That's an impressive number for them on the road. Hall spins around, loses possession, unless they say, no, oh, they're going to give it to the Gales. Looked like it tipped off one of the St. Mary's players, but the referees don't agree with me. In a game like this, Tom, you're going to have probably 70 to 75 possessions, and now St. Mary's has to start converting on more of them than they have. Oh, boy, right in the... Uh, face of our cameraman. Once again, I'm wrong. I, I, I thought it was tipped by a St. Mary's player, but it looked like to be a clean turnover. See re BYU now with 12. A little runner in the lane isn't there. And there's another offensive rebound and another foul on Garner Meads. His second. Again, anytime there's trouble, it usually is due to giving up an offensive rebound. It's tipped to Collins, and Collins is knocked down by Meads. Blake steps to the Brett steps to the line, 68.2% knocks it down. Randy Bennett writing a Steve Cleveland story, or he hopes to. Three years ago, this team won two games, and they're going to get kicker. Is that going to be number five on Kickert? That's it. He is fouled out. And he's going to, Randy Bennett will take the whole minute to make his substitution as Kickert fouls out. My point was, three years ago they won two games, Bennett came in, 
They won nine two years ago, 15 last year. They're eight and five now and picked to contend for the top of the West Coast Conference. So I, I'd say good hire by the folks at St. Mary's College. Well, and, and it's, a, it's a guy who had 16 years in college basketball as an assistant coach at Idaho. I mentioned it to Tim Floyd at the San Diego under Hank Egan, who everybody knows in this part of the country knows as an Air Force coach, and a very good pro assistant coach now. Then he went to Pepperdine with Lorenzo Romar, then to St. Louis. He's paid the price, and at 41 years old, this is now a very solid program in Moraga, California. No question about that. Meads, front rims it, rebound. Sanders. And Roland scoops it ahead. Blake Collins trying to penetrate. And they'll shoot some more free throws. Mark Bigelow. Number four on Biggs. Got his feet a little bit tied up. That's a nice dribble drive to the basket by Brett Collins and a chance to get some more free throws here. If he had only had eyes in the back of his head, he could have seen big Rafael Araujo flying in for the block behind him. St. Mary's hanging around, shooting it very well. And, of course, just as we put up the graphic, they miss. Mark Bigelow will sit down with four. Mike Hall back in. Gales within six. Six point game, five and a half to go. It's one of the longer stretches that BYU's gone tonight without any kind of scoring from the floor. After that layup, remember a couple of minutes ago by Schof. Hoffa with a face up jumper makes him so dangerous. He can rock right or rock left. He can put it on the ground, he can shoot. Blocks some shots, he rebounds. First round pick. And there's a bad turnover for St. Mary's. An empty possession at a time when they need to get something down eight with just under five to go. Barry thinking about the three. Mike Hall. Back to Lemus. Plenty of time as the Cougars work a little clock and run the offense, making the Gales play more defense. Lemus, they'd let him go all the way in. He lays it up and in. He waved off Sanders with the ball fake and just laid it in. Timeout, Randy Bennett. 14 points for Lou Lemus. 12 of them here in the second half. And he would be the difference in this ballgame. Great ball fake to lose the defender. Look at this. And this is Lemus. We talked about him, and you mentioned it, Tom, scoring the first seven points of the second half. Where would they be the second half without Lou Lemus? Smart basketball that time. You saw him just fake, and you saw Sanders just lean a little to his left and opening the door for the easy deuce. Lemus' shooting lately has been outstanding, and he was already a good shooter in the high 40s, but the last four games, he's hit 16 to 27 coming into this game. That's 60%. Let's take a look at the big man, Rafael, working down low. See, that's a classic move. The textbook big man, turn around, face up, see which way you want to do your business, and he just squares up and hits a 10-footer. Yep, solid basketball at a time when BYU had gone a while without a field goal. They needed some quick uh, production from the floor. Sports West is your source for sports on the Internet. Find the latest information on schedules and upcoming telecasts. And be sure to enter to win exciting prizes, tickets, and special promotions from these featured sponsors. Log on now at sportswest.tv, powered by I4 Solutions. We're at the time of the year, Tom, when there's a lot of holiday breaks. The guys who play on these teams go home for a little bit of time at the, at the breaks at this time of the year. You also have the holiday tournaments going on. The, the result is... There's not a lot of practice time for right. these teams. And uh, I know that uh, Steve Cleveland felt that way coming yep. into this game. And, and, and in fact, uh, Randy Bennett mentioned that to us. But he said, we got nine days to get ready for our league play. Yep. Steve's got to take his team to North Carolina State first. Right. Coach Cleve said, we haven't practiced in two weeks. You don't get any better playing games. And Bennett said, you know, you do what you do in practice. And he, he says his team's fundamentals erode when they don't practice. John Wooden used to say, I am not a strategic coach. I am a practice coach. That's where the, the real work gets done on, in a college basketball team. 
Ajuanu looking to hand off, running out of time as he turns right around. Rafael, and there's a foul. Bodies flying all over the place. That's going to be Garner Meads. Well, when Garner gets in there, bodies tend to fly. <laughs> Look at that, there's a whole bunch of hammering. If they didn't give it to Garner, they could have given it to Big 55. Yeah, That's the third Steve on Cleveland Meads. very happy that it's number three on Meads and not number four on Adelujo. Ajuanu knocks it down. He's a senior from France. Did you know that every West Coast Conference team has foreign-born player? And half of the teams have an Australian. Well, they're a lot closer to Australia. They can recruit them. No question. With a hand check on Roland. We are under four to go. Cougars clinging to an eight-point lead. They've had opportunities to blow out this team, but to St. Mary's credit, defensively, yeah. they, they've hung around. Yeah, just when I thought BYU's defense was taking over this game is when, uh, you know, the the, re the offensive rebounds, really, I think, are what started to turn it a little bit for St. Mary's. Kevin Woodbury go to the free throw line now. 57% only. Knocks that one down. Number four on St. Mary's point guard. We're going to step aside now as the Cougars get back to a 10-point lead. Steve Cleveland having a good time, and so are the more than 13,000 fans here at the Marriott Center. Oops, as the Utes visit the Wildcats of Weber State. And Sports Beat Sunday coming your way. Our special retrospective on the Stockton the Malone story of the year. Steve Cleveland coaches show live. We're looking ahead at... NC State, and of course, looking back at this one, and Kyle Whittingham joins us live, the youth defensive coordinator. What is Kyle Whittingham going to leave? Everybody's been asking that question, apparently. So uh, he told me the other night that uh, he said, you know, you never say never, but I love it here. Yeah. Which is pretty much what I'd say if I were in his position. But his stock has never been higher. See the numbers right there? Kicker already out. That's the big one. Both teams have shot 22 times the second half. And BYU. there's a turnover out of the timeout. BYU's 11 for 22. That's 50%, Tom. Yep. The other team, St. Mary's, is 5 of 22. That's 23%. The second half, you can't. It's, it's hard to believe they're within 10. St. Mary's logging the turnovers. They came in shooting just 28% from three for the season. Uh, they'll check that 31%. So even by their standards, they're, they're not getting it done at all here. Lemus, entry pass again. Hoffa. Rocking and rolling, and there's a left-handed hook. It's just short. It'll be Cougar basketball. With that shot, Adarujo is now 8 of 18. He scored 17 points and has nine rebounds. Not bad for a guy that couldn't walk after the yeah. Santa Clara game. Exactly. Because of the back yesterday, but found a chiropractor to do a number on him today. He said he felt much better, the best he's felt all week. There goes Gordon Eight and 2.30, the freshman from Salt Lake City wanted this one. Yeah, strong move by Garner. BYU has got to continue to build some confidence into this young man's game yes. because in league play, he's going to be very important to them. Knocks down the free throw. One of the most highly recruited players in the country. Schoberg adding on to the foul trouble for Randy Bennett. And uh, the Cougars won a fierce battle for Garner Meets from the University of Utah and other schools. And they, uh, as you mentioned, they need him to come conference play because uh, Steve Cleveland said he wants to try to play big. He can play small, but in the conference, he feels most comfortable with his big guys. There's her for three. That's not good, and BYU up 12 with a chance to salt it away with a couple of good possessions here. That offensive rebound fell right into Hall's hands. He's the best offensive rebound in this team because he's so quick and anticipates, but that time he just stood there and landed in his stomach area. Brett Collins back in, and her will check out. Kevin Woodbury kicks it in, looking for some help. There's Hall. St. Mary's had cut a 12-point lead to six. Kicker fouled out. Yep. It seemed to end their momentum. Yeah, no question. Rigney.
Kennedy battling with Lemus. And Lou will go to the free throw line where he is a better than 68% free throw shooter. Two for two tonight. Bank rims that one. Sanders checks in for Ajuwanu. Tom, about well less than three minutes left. You can see on the clock. When's the last time you saw anybody, uh, you know, a whole team go through a game without getting double figures? Yeah, Nobody no else double has. figure scores for the Gales. And right now, without kicker, they're, they're desperate for some offense. If Marigny would score, he'd have ten. The Hall is locking him up. Yeah. Rollins shown the ability to get himself free. There he goes. Blocked. Kicked out the hole. To Woodbury who fouled. Now to Ujo comes in. They're going to talk about it. That was a hard foul there. It was a hard foul. I don't think it was a flagrant foul. It was hard basketball. There's yeah. no question. This is Lemus. This is a beautiful pass. Right on the money to Hall. Nice pass by Hall. And then, was it Sanders? Just trying yeah. to get in position defensively. It was a hard foul. And now, things have gone totally out of control for the Gales. A lot of emotions brewing. And Rick Hartzell just rang up a technical foul on Brett. Collins. Maybe that was, I believe they rang it up on uh, Paul Marigny as they sort out the situation there. Scott Thornwell right in the middle of it. There's Collins trying to explain to his teammates and coaching, coaching staff what happened. Thorn, Thornley now explaining to Cleveland. Yeah. was the one technical. Mark Bigelow will check back in. And you see BYU starting to pull away and Randy Bennett trying to make his point. He's, I guess there's some kind of a, there was a, a choke involved somewhere there. Bigelow knocks down the first one. And it's a 14-point lead, soon to be 15. They go out now with 18 points. A new season high. Let's see what happened here. A big hard foul there. He, yeah, there's Collins trying to come in. Otto Ujo. That's Otto Ujo using his big hips to clear out some space to protect Woodbury. And then you see the ref with his hand on Collins' throat. You saw it right there. You saw, I believe that was Hartzell's hand, the left hand on, on the throat. I'm, I believe he was just trying to restrain him, hold him away. Okay, well, cooler heads have prevailed. You stay calm throughout, Craig. I, I'm proud of you. It's too bad something like that has to take yeah. away from a, a pretty gutty effort by St. Mary's. Nice leave there. Nice setup from Roland to Sanders. 13-point lead. Jordan Borman has checked in. Now he's hounding Woodbury. Kevin goes right around him. Trying to find a free player, and he backs it right back out. He's got plenty of time. There's Bigelow, 17 now. No rush at all. Entry pass to Jensen. There's an offensive foul. Sanders making a nice defensive play, getting into space and picking up the offensive foul. So it's a 13-point game, but the Gales continue to play hard. Third foul here on Jensen. Yeah, Bigelow bounces it. Jared was not quite familiar with how much room he had. He didn't have a lot, and he knocked his op op opponent down. BYU's got a long time without a field goal, not that they need him. And there's another turnover. Bigelow playing way out in the passing lanes, forcing the turnover. And Rigney will check back in now. Tyler Hurl sit down. Rolling all over Lemus in the backcourt. 
Really, the story in this game is going to be BYU's second-half defense. The numbers for St. Mary's are just not holding up. They're shooting. They've got long stretches without field goals. They've only scored 20 in the second half, Tom. Yeah, they've been beat up. And their defense really kept them in it until recently. Yep. There's a foul on Rowland. And that'll be five on number two. Brett Collins will check in for Roland, who's fouled out. Sixty-six fifty-three. Cougars with a minute sixteen left. The BYU will improve to. They'll run their string to 40 in a row, the non-conference opponents here. Improved to 10 and 2. They will have won 9 of their last 10 now, and they are rolling into Raleigh, North Carolina next week. And then, of course, the Mountain West Wars begin. It's been about a two-minute march to the free-throw line, and BYU's 8 of 10, and now 9 of 11 during that time. Lemus hits a couple, and wholesale changes as the Cougars clear the bench. Austin Ainge is in, Mike Rose, Terry Nashif, Lemus is out, Bigelow is out, Mike Dresser checks in, Garner Meads is out. So it's officially garbage time here. But not for the players on the floor. These are serious minutes. There's a minute 12 to go, a chance to impress the coaches and put up some numbers. Marigny, Ajuanu, and he's fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. It's a 15 point lead for the Cougars. Steve Cleveland has won 118 games now here, and he's uh, fifth all time, closing in on Frank Arnold, who won 137 here. And, and his last four years plus, Cleve has won 95 and lost 43. I mean, Phenomenal job done by that man who inherited a team that had won one game. And I remember his famous story of knocking on doors in the dorm saying, please come watch us play. That's not a problem anymore. Almost 14,000 fans turning out here during a semester break. In Raleigh, he'll coach his 199th game as a BYU head coach. Raleigh is always willing to pull the trigger. Sanders comes away with it. Crossing over. And it's back to Nash. There's Rose. Body's flying. Dresser lays it in. It's a 15-point game. This is all over except the last few minutes, and Marigny will try to go to work. Foreman. Collins. Foreman trying to do business. Clock winding down. Crossing over. Three-point attempt, not there. Rebound, batted around, ball on the ground. Nashif has it, and that should do it. Austin Ames will back it back out. Ball game as Steve Cleveland walks over to shake hands with Randy Bennett. The Cougars, 70 to 55. They improved to 10 and 2. At the conclusion of the game, we present the most valuable player presented by AT&T Wireless, the Wireless Service America Trusts, and by Nokia, connecting people. Craig, the AT&T Wireless Nokia MVP for the game is Mark Bigelow. Season high of 18 points. Bigelow did a great job the first half in about six minutes' time. He did all his scoring, got very active, and then added enough in the second half.